What's going on you guys? So after posting my sparkler long exposure video, I got quite a few questions asking me what does an ND filter actually do? And I didn't really explain it in that video, but today I'm on a little adventure and I will actually show you guys how to use an ND filter and what it can do to make your photography look really amazing. So let's get into it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in my bag, I've brought with me my variable ND filter and uh, it's a really good one because it goes all the way from ND2 to ND400. So ND filters are really important for when you're doing daytime long exposure photography and that's because when you don't use one, when you set your shutter speed really low, all the light around you will hit the sensor and will just overexpose your image. So that's not good. You want perfectly exposed images and that's where this comes in. When you stick it on your lens, it actually it cuts out the light but still lets the detail in and it'll make your photos perfectly exposed and allows you to create awesome long exposures during the daytime. So let's stick this on the lens and uh, yeah, let's go take some photos. So guys, I found this stream behind me here and I'm gonna stick the ND filter on. I'm gonna set the tripod up. And remember, you must have a tripod, otherwise your photos will just be shaky, they'll be blurry, and they won't be usable. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna set the tripod up and let's get to work. So I think I got all the shots I wanted to get and I've been eaten alive by mosquitoes because they're literally everywhere here. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. But uh, yeah, let's go on home and let's check these out on the computer. So by using the ND filter, I was able to capture perfectly exposed, long exposure images of that tiny, barely flowing creek I found in the forest. Also, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my green strip lights that surround my desk, they broke as I was setting up to shoot this video. So I've ordered a new one and it should be here in just a few more days. So because I have an ND filter that goes from ND2 to ND400, ND400 lets in a lot less light than ND2, I was able to play around with the settings on the spot and kind of figure out what strength of ND I should use. I find that owning a variable ND filter is just so much more easy and convenient than owning, say, six different ND filters which have different strengths, different ND stops. And that's because you really don't wanna be fumbling around on the shoot trying to figure out which filter to use because that just takes up time and energy and you need that energy to actually focus on the shot because you wanna get some bangers when you're shooting. So for the photos, I had my f-stop at f9 and that's because I really wanted to get most of the shot in focus. So having your f-stop at f9 allows you to get that deeper depth of the field, getting more of the shot in focus. I had my shutter set to 15 seconds, which is a long exposure but it allowed me to get that really cool blurry motion effect on the water. If I didn't have my ND filter and I kept my shutter at 15 seconds, the photo would have turned out like this. Super overexposed and just extremely unusable. My ISO was set to 100 and that's because I wanted the least amount of grain as possible in the image. ISO is in-camera brightening, in-camera exposure. And the higher the ISO you have, the more grain will be produced in that image. So if you guys didn't know, I hope you know now how to use an ND filter for daytime long exposure photography. If you guys did enjoy this video, go down below, drop a like, drop a comment if you wanna try this yourselves, tell me how it went. And if you guys really enjoyed it, go down below and hit that subscribe button. Oh, and one more thing, my Nomads edit competition actually ends today. So if you guys want to see who won, go over to my Instagram and I'll put the winners on my story. Thank you guys for participating. And with that said, I will see you in the next one.